Here are the patch notes for the Escape from Tarkov Beta 0.14 patch. There will be a wipe with the patch. This update will not affect Escape from Tarkov Arena and player progress. New content. Ground Zero. The Ground Zero location situated in the city center of Tarkov has been added to the game. The location features a large number of infrastructure facilities of the modern city. Banks, cafes, restaurants, stores, pharmacies, and so on. All of this is towered by the skyscrapers of Tarkov. In the very center of the location is the main Russian branch office of Terror Group, where the original conflict began. The most violent clashes between USEC PMC operatives and OMON took place on the facility's premises. The location is intended for beginner players from level 1 to 20. PMCs of higher levels 20 plus will not be able to access the location. Scavs will have access to the location at any player level. New starter quests have been added to the location. Visual cues for new players have been added to the location. Quests, debut, checking renamed to background check, shortage, supplier, Gunsmith Part 1, received updated text descriptions. New boss, Colante. A new boss, Colante, has been added to the streets of Tarkov. He is a former officer of the MVD, Ministry of Internal Affairs. During his service in law enforcement, he had a reputation as a vile man, whose behavior was sometimes feared by his co-workers. During his work, he often resorted to his favorite method of interrogation, a rubber baton, as well as other non-statutory pressure on someone who was not to his liking. Thanks to his physical strength and bold temperament, after the events of the terror group scandal, he formed a gang and began to do what he himself was recently supposed to combat, looting and banditry. However, even before the conflict, he often provided protection to local businessmen. For example, his good relations with Caban are well known. Calante has a small number of guards, prefers to stay in one position and occasionally patrols his territory. If he feels he has the upper hand, he may switch to his police baton. He lives in the area around Klimov Shopping Mall and the Tarkov Academy of the Ministry of Internal Affairs. Caban's New Guards Boss Caban is joined by his closest associates, Boss Mach and Gus. Since the time of Caban's active involvement in business, they have served as his loyal associates, solving many delicate issues for him. Their loyal service and their exuberant character made them his most trusted confidants. In their spare time, these two dandies like to dress up at Ragman's Place and organize illegal street races through the streets of Tarkov in tuned cars from the Caban's dealership. Boss Mach and Gus always stay close to Caban and charge into battle for him. They prefer their unique clothes to their battle gear, though there are occasional exceptions. Boss Mach has a special fondness for machetes and Gus for crowbars. Shoreline rework. Visually reworked most of the land landscape, keeping the main points of interest intact. Added a new area, a small cattle farm which is home to smugglers and scavs. Updated the light sources. Optimized most of the location, completely redesigned the calling system. Reworked location borders. Concrete fence replaced by minefields and snipers in most areas. The location is also slightly expanded in some areas. Reworked some points of interest, including the addition of new quests and activities in several previously empty zones. Some areas have been reworked to improve gameplay, added a river crossing, reworked almost all elevation and sniper positions, as well as scav areas of interest, etc. Added more than 30 new containers and Jaeger stashes. Fixed over 1,200 visual and minor bugs. New weapons, equipment, and loot. Added a number of new items, weapon modifications, equipment, and customization. New weapons. The KBP 9A91 9x39 Compact Assault Rifle. The KBP VSK 94 9x39 Rifle. The SIG MCX Spear 6.8x51.277 Fury Assault Rifle. The Digtrov RPD 762x39 machine gun. The Digtrov RPDN 762x39 machine gun. Updated the models and animations for the Simonov SKS 762x39 carbine. Changes in new mechanics. Achievements. An achievement system has been added to the game. Players will receive achievements upon completing various objectives. Earned achievements will not be lost with wipes. You can view the earned achievements on the achievements tab on the character screen. Hall of Fame. A new hideout zone, Hall of Fame, has been added to the game. The zone serves as a place where you can display mementos. For displaying the dog tags of players of the opposite faction killed by your PMC, you get a bonus to combat skills leveling. The higher the level of the eliminated player, the greater the skill bonus. You can add items to your favorites. Such items will be displayed in your profile. New hitbox and armor system. Hitboxes. The head is divided into separate simple hit zones, which coincide with the protection zones of helmets and masks. Three hit zones have been added to the head area. Front neck, throat, back neck, neck, and face collider. Thorax and stomach hit zones are divided into front, back, and sides. The pelvic hit zone is divided into front groin and back buttocks. Hits to these zones cause damage to the stomach zone. Forearm hit zones have been reduced in diameter. The death screen now shows more detailed information about the area that was fatally wounded, for example, thorax upper back. Armor. 37 ballistic plates have been added to the game, 7 for the chest section, 6 for the rear section, 20 universal plates for the chest and rear sections, and 4 for the side sections. Ballistic plates have their own parameters specific to armor, strength, material, armor damage absorption, ricochet parameters, armor type, etc. Ballistic plates are divided into different formats, depending on the size and format of the armor section. Ballistic plates cannot be inserted or removed while wearing the body armor, it must be removed first. The visual appearance of a ballistic plate depends on its durability. Ballistic plates can now spawn in appropriate areas 
and containers on locations. Ballistic plates are affected by the light armor and heavy armor skills depending on the type of the ballistic plate, light and heavy. Added separate ballistic plate zones on the character visually matching the location in the body armor. The hit registration zones of ballistic plates of the same format have the same position in all body armor and plate carriers with slots for this plate format. The dimensions of the ballistic plate zones are the same as the average dimensions of real ballistic plates of that format. Ballistic plate slots and integrated armor slots have been added to body armor vests and plate carriers. All ballistic plates of the corresponding format can be installed in the armor plate slots. Slots of some armor plates can be fitted with plates of several formats. For example, the chest section of the ANA Tactical M2 plate carrier can be fitted with the SAPI and granite format plates. Body armor protection is no longer uniform. It now depends on what areas the body armor visually protects. For example, no body armor protects the armpit area. The durability of body armor has been converted to the durability of installed armor. An armored collar that protects the neck hitbox has been added to a large number of body armors. Body armor vest cost, weight, and penalties have been adjusted. Some of the cost, weight, and penalties have been moved to ballistic plates. Integrated armor slots have been added to a large number of helmets. Helmet durability has been converted to the durability of the integrated armor. Integrated armor in body armor and helmets. The protection of armor and helmets is divided into separate zones, depending on which section the zone protects, sometimes several zones. These are the slots with integrated armor. Integrated armor zones have their own separate durability. For example, you can now reduce your opponent's chest zone armor durability and not damage the durability of other armor zones if you shoot them in the chest. In the inspection window, you can see exactly which areas of the vest or helmet are protected and what their durability rating is. Integrated armor cannot be removed or replaced. Each integrated armor has its own armor-specific settings, durability, material, armor damage absorption, ricochet parameters, armor type, and others. Integrated armor is affected by the light armor and heavy armor skills depending on the type of the armor, light or heavy. Balancing. The damage parameters on various armor materials has been adjusted to reflect the new durability values. When repairing body armor, durability is distributed according to the following priorities. Ballistic plates, chest back, sides, and then integrated armor, chest, collar, back, pelvis, sides, other. You can also repair ballistic plates as separate items. When repairing helmets, durability is distributed according to the following priorities. Integrated armor, face, top, eyes, jaws, back of head, ears, other. Integrated armor can receive an enhancement when it is repaired. Chances for armor to receive common and rare enhancements while being repaired have been increased. Interface. You can now see the durability of different armor zones and ballistic plates by hovering over the durability digit of a vest or helmet. This also works for flea market offers. You can see brief information about the presence and quantity of ballistic plates in the posted flea market offers. Slots for ballistic plates and integrated armor, if the vest has them, have been added to the vest and helmet inspector screens. The order of the slots is always the same. Armor class is now displayed with a Roman numeral icon on the ballistic plate icon in the armor class list. Flea market and trading. The flea market ban has been removed from a large number of body armors. Ballistic plates of protection classes 5 and 6 cannot be sold on the flea market. Ballistic plates have been added to the inventory of various traders. Vaulting and obstacle interaction. Obstacle vaulting has been added to the game. There are two types of vaulting, climbing the obstacle and remaining on it, for example, climbing a crate to fire at the enemy from the top of it, vaulting over an obstacle, for example, jumping over a small fence to take a shortcut. Each of these types has different animations for different heights, different parameters of stamina and arm stamina consumption, and different action speeds depending on the negative effects. During a sprint, you can jump over obstacles without the goal of climbing them, vaulting. If vaulting is performed while walking, the loudness of such actions will be noticeably lower than jumping and sprinting. For the convenience of overcoming obstacles, an option has been added to the game settings. Vaulting over medium obstacles, where you can choose auto or hotkey. If you select auto, your character will climb over medium and low height obstacles by himself. If you select hotkey, you will need to press the jump key to initiate vaulting, but this way you can control the character's actions more precisely. The character now stops if he hits a wall while walking or sprinting. Shoulder transition. The ability to move firearms from the right shoulder to the left shoulder and back has been added to the game. This can be useful when you want to fire from the left side while behind cover. Shoulder transition is available during walking, crouching, leaning, and other actions. Shoulder transition is not available while prone and overhead and side blind firing. Positioning the weapon on the left shoulder imposes a penalty. The weapon has an additional sway when moving. Control settings. Warning, all control settings have been reset to default. Added shoulder transition action, default key is mouse 4. Added vaulting action, default key is space, press type is continuous. The jump action has been reassigned to spacebar key with release, press type. Try these control settings in-game before changing them. Preset ammo loading. You can now save settings presets for loading ammunition into magazines sequentially, as well as quickly loading magazines using these presets. Players can name each preset, select the appropriate loading preset, view its contents, and compare it to other loading presets. The magazine loading preset is divided into three blocks. Top, how many and which cartridges will be at the top of the magazine slash belt, i.e. which cartridges will be first. Loop, how many and which cartridges will be cycled in the magazine slash belt. 
bottom, how many and which cartridges will be at the bottom of the magazine slash belt, i.e. which cartridges will be last. You can create up to 30 unique magazine loading presets with a limit of 5 presets per caliber. New recoil mechanics. The recoil mechanic has been improved to make it more realistic and comfortable for players. A special emphasis has been placed on improving the feel of semi-auto and short burst shooting. New recoil mechanic now includes a variety of flexible settings, allowing for balance adjustments based on analytical data and player feedback. All weapon recoil parameters have been rebalanced. Lightkeeper services. After completing certain Lightkeeper quests, you will be able to unlock access to the following services. Sacred Amulet Service. Lightkeeper gives the character the item Sacred Amulet. While the character is wearing the amulet, all cultists on all locations do not attack you unless provoked. Rogue Support Service. When a player purchases this service in that raid, rogues will not attack the player who ordered the service, regardless of their faction. In addition, rogues will provide fire support by attacking targets that the players who purchased the service have directed their attention to. Zerchai Support Service. When a player buys this service in that raid, Zerchai will support the player by firing at the targets the player is attacking. Weapon Rack. Now you can add the displayed weapon to your favorites. These weapons will be displayed in your profile. Viewable Profiles. Added the ability to view another player's profile page. In a player's profile, you can view gear equipped by the player, brief statistics, rare achievements earned, favorite weapons displayed at the weapon rack, favorite items displayed in the Hall of Fame. Player profiles can be viewed on any screen of the game, including the raid exit screen after dying to another player. AI. Adjusted peaceful and combat behavior of AI when moving from one area to another within one location. Balancing changes to trading. Change the trader prices and availability of ammunition in the following calibers. 12.7 by 55 millimeter, 338 Lapua Magnum, 366 TKM, 5.45 by 39 millimeter, 5.56 by 45 millimeter, 0.300 blackout, 9 by 39 millimeter, 762 by 39 millimeter, 762 by 51 millimeter, 762 by 54 MMR, 9 by 18 millimeter, 9 by 19 millimeter, 357 Magnum, 0.45 ACP, 4.6 by 30 millimeter, 5.7 by 28 millimeter, 9 by 21 millimeter, 12 over 70, 23 by 75 millimeter, 762 by 25 millimeter, TT. Change the trader prices and availability of armor on all loyalty levels. Adjusted various trade offers and barters of weapon attachments and other items. Balancing changes to quests. Expanded quest rewards. You will now be rewarded more often with unlocking previously unavailable trade offers, barters, ammo, and armor crafting recipes. Change the order of skier quests between Friend from the West Part 2 and Setup. New order, Friend from West Part 2, Setup. Informed means armed. Chumming, Bullshit, Silent Caliber. Change the quest objectives for The Punisher Part 2, The Punisher Part 4, The Tarkov Shooter Part 4. Balancing changes to crafting. Adjusted armor crafts. Now to make an armor vest, you need to find a set of fabrics and ballistic plate that fits the form factor. Adjusted ammo crafts. Reduce the production time and cost of cheap ammunition. Balancing changes to ammo. The damage and armor penetration of parameters of different caliber ammunition have been revised and adjusted. Balancing changes to muzzle devices. The muzzle devices have been rebalanced. Suppressors, muzzle adapters, flash hiders, and compensators. BTR. A BTR-82A has been added to the streets of Tarkov, traveling between different stop points in the city. The BTR driver offers various services to his passengers. Taxi service. The player can travel to any available point in the city in total safety. Move items to stash service. The player can send items to the stash with the status found in raid. This service is available only for PMCs. Covering fire service. The player can order covering fire with the help of BTR weaponry, which provides the safest possible drop-off at the stopping point. The service is available only after purchasing the taxi service. The service is only available for PMCs. List of stop points on Streets of Tarkov, Pinewood Hotel, Rodina Cinema, Collapsed Crane, Cardinal Apartment Complex, Tram, City Center. The BTR is neutral to all players unless a player starts attacking it first. If someone purchases the Covering Fire service, the BTR becomes hostile. When the service ends, the BTR becomes neutral to all players again. The cost of the service depends on the faction. Bear, USCC, SCAV, SCAV Karma, Charisma Skill Level, and Travel Distance. Quality of Life. The visual effect for the painkillers has been changed. The door to the expanded part of the hideout is now always open after construction. Change the camera system in the hideout from rail to free camera. To move in space, WASD. To rotate the camera, hold middle mouse button plus mouse movement. To zoom the camera, scroll wheel. List of changes. Fix several visual bugs and artifacts on streets of Tarkov and Shoreline. Fixed incorrect spawn points of random containers on all locations. Fixed a problem that led to the lack of damage registration from melee weapons in some cases. Fixed incorrect behavior of rogues when attacking the hangar buildings on Lighthouse. Fixed an issue where killed bots would remain standing. Fixed the lack of muzzle flash when looking at a shooting player. Fixed AI behavior when interacting with stationary weapons. Fixed incorrect values of some parameters and character statistics. Fixed incorrect camera behavior in the hideout when scrolling in UI elements. Fixed several compatibility issues with weapon attachments. Fix the ability to hear outdoor sounds whilst inside the bunker on reserve. And those are the main patch notes for the Escape from Tarkov Beta 0.14 patch.